Hey, Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. I decided to dig into the archives today, going through some old pictures and even an old video that I shot with this uh, garage where we took out the old drywall, all the old insulation, and we air sealed the garage uh, wall between the uh, garage and the living space. So this is a great way to, to help improve the energy efficiency and indoor air quality of your home. I hope you like it. Stay tuned. Okay, so how to air seal walls between the garage and the living space. So let's go ahead and talk about why you should air seal the walls between the garage and the living space. First of all, it keeps out humidity. There's a lot of people that live in hot, humid environments that leave their garage door open, especially that pets, particularly a cat, they'll leave the garage door slightly open for the cat to run in and out. But even if uh, you insulate the garage door and all that stuff, there's still ways for air to get around it. Garage doors are one of the biggest channels of air loss. So if it's hot and humid and rainy outside, it's gonna be hot and humid and rainy inside, right? It's gonna affect the humidity inside the garage. So the first thing, air sealing that wall between the garage and the uh, the living space is going to stop and block a lot of that humidity. You may still want to get a dehumidifier for that garage just to keep it below 60% because of course inside the garage you've also got heating and air units and duct work and if it's hot and humid in there it can sweat and cause mold. So anyway, uh, a couple other things keeps out odors. You know, a lot of people put their litter boxes out there. They got their lawnmower out there. They got different things like that. Odors can transfer in and out of the living space. It keeps the conditioned air of the living space inside the living space. It's, a, it's an important place to insulate, okay? Not only to insulate with, with a thermal barrier, but also an air barrier, okay? Uh, it increases uh, comfort, obviously, when you insulate, but it also keeps fumes out of the living space. You've got... Uh, like I mentioned, your, your vehicles are parked in there. They give off fumes. Car even some people will start their cars in the garage. You got a carbon monoxide built up maybe that could at least blow back into the garage. You've got your lawnmower and gas and paint fumes in the garage. Uh, it lowers noise as well. Uh, two component spray foam is great at reducing noise levels. It keeps that noise out of the living space, keeps dust out of the living space and all of that, of course, improves air quality. So let's take a look at this, uh, this old school video. So uh, my uh, camera work has improved a little since then, but let's take a look. Okay, one of the first things you're gonna wanna do before starting your insulation project is to clean out all the stuff inside the garage. Spray foam uh, can be kind of messy, so you wanna make sure you get everything out. Uh, this garage is a little unique. Yours may be different, but it does not have any drywall above, so we'll be able to spray foam uh, up there. Uh, it also has a little door that goes under the stairs that's on the other side of the uh, drywall. Um, you can see that there is um, a door, entry door there. Uh, a good outside uh, security door has been installed, and then uh, it goes on around. It's got block walls on uh, three sides and then drywall separating the downstairs from the garage. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take out that drywall and we're actually going to air seal it as well because a lot of air moves between the garage and the drywall. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, show you a little bit of before. So one of the first things we had to do is we had to get rid of all of the drywall and the insulation. I'm going to um, show you a little bit about uh, this spot right here. You see all this foil that's down here? That was the insulation. That's all there was as the insulation. You can see the stairwell, the landing right here. The front door is over here. You got the landing, the stairwell. Uh, so all of this was open. You can see the interior wall through here and all that sort of thing. So what we did was we exposed all of this wall. You can see the old uh, electrical outlets and different things like that. Not a whole lot of insulation uh, to be seen. Uh, then we went over here on this side, removed the drywall and everything over here. Now what we did then was we fogged uh, the entire area because of uh, plumbing leaks and you know this house was built in the 60s. 
uh, late 60s. Uh, so uh, anyway, there was a lot of uh, potential for mold growth and things like that. So we went ahead and fogged all of the, uh, the drywall that was left and the studs. And you can see how wet uh, the, the concrete is after all of that. They did wind up putting a good um, security door with, uh, with insulation inside of it. Um, so that was good. So we, we took all this out and got everything fogged up and let it dry. Then we also decided to uh, insulate the uh, rim joist while we were in the space. So as you can see here, this uh, again was many years ago. So this was our old school way of insulating rim joists uh, with just the spray foam. Nowadays, we use the foam board and cut it to size and put it in and then spray foam around the foam board. We feel like that's a, a little easier, especially if you ever have to uh, get in behind here for whatever reason, the foam board is a little easier to remove. But this is very effective as well. Very, very effective. You can see uh, it was it was a spray foamed uh, for the rim joist insulation. Now let's go ahead and show you what the uh, under the stairs looks like. Now again, this is before. Uh, this is under the stairs. This is the stairwell. So this is this right here, and this is underneath this part. So we got in this little cubby hole area, spray foamed all of this uh, because you get a lot of drafting uh, up into the steps. Especially if you've got carpet, you might not notice it as much. Uh, they did have carpet. Uh, so we went ahead and spray foamed all of that and then this wall here actually came around spray foamed all of that as well uh, so that way it created an air barrier between the living space here and here and uh, so you want to make sure you air seal under those stairs if you've got stairs and then the other thing that we did was this is the finished wall so this shows you air sealing uh, all of this where around the electrical outlets, the top plates, all of that sort of thing. Here's another view of it over here. And then this is a laundry chute, uh, air sealed, all of that dryer vent, everything was air sealed. There's the rim joist air sealed and all of that. Now we didn't stop there. Also, there's an HVAC penetration right there. Uh, we also put um, R11 insulation over uh, the, uh, the spray foam okay to give more of a thermal barrier as you can see there's still quite a bit of space left uh, so we didn't want to not put a good thermal barrier there although spray foam is a great uh, thermal barrier uh, but I think it's R6 per inch uh, so it's very good thermal barrier the only problem is it's real expensive so you you want to use as little spray foam as possible to do what we would call a critical seal uh, or even a guaranteed seal. This would be considered a guaranteed seal because everything is covered. Then you put the uh, fiberglass in between or foam board if you want, it doesn't matter. Whatever your preference is, rock wool in between there. You just don't wanna have it bulging out past the studs because that can push on the drywall whenever you put the drywall on. So you wanna make sure you use a thin amount. So we chose an R11, we could get an R11 fit in there real nice. And I didn't take any pictures of that for whatever reason. Uh, but you can see this door shows you how much air loss uh, with this door closed was getting in here as well. So we needed to, to make sure that cubby hole was taken care of. And then here is the final product. So this is once it's all done. Uh, we, we also hit a few gaps up in the floor. Um, so this was the drywall put back. They put, uh, you know, some, uh, some of their uh, uh, racks and, and different things for storage. So that's it. I mean, it's it's a good DIY project. If you want to tackle that yourself, uh, you can you can get some of those things done. Uh, but it's also a really good project that we can do for you. So I hope this helped you. If you got a lot of concern about air quality, especially in the basement, this was the basement part of the house, obviously reducing noise and different things like that. My name is Michael Church, Crawl Space Ninja. Hope you make it a happy and blessed day, and we'll see you later. Thank you.